Okay, and we're off with another How I Paint Horses vid. This one's obviously being my take. I'll drop all the paints I used in this video in the description, so you can grab them all from there. No need to write things down as the video is happening. Okay, I'm using Perry Miniatures ACW Cavalry, prime with a matte white, just a hardware store spray. Ordinarily, I'd have glued the riders on before I kicked off. I don't like double handling. Um, the riders as it damages the paint, as you'll see at the end, but you do whatever you prefer. I've left them off for the uh, purposes of seeing the horses painted. I'm using a cheap synthetic brush with a reasonable point for this project. Uh, GW Contrast Snake Bite Leather is getting applied liberally over all of the horse, horse furniture at this point. Just cover the whole lot. Um, if you don't have contrast, just use a normal leather brown and maybe hit it with a desert yellow dry brush to add a bit of definition to the edges. Uh, so the first one, the uh, first horse colour we're going to do here is mahogany brown. Kick off by mixing a little bit of black with Vallejo whole red. Uh, this process requires your paint to be a bit thicker than usual, so don't weather, worry about watering it too down much, but it's still going to be wet. Um, I'm actually wetting my brush by rinsing it off camera, um, but if you're in a dry area or doing large batches, you might want to use a wet palette or just add water straight to the mix. Um, so once you've got your base mix, just cover the whole horse. So everywhere that isn't horse furniture, just get the tails or the body, the, the feet, the whole lot. Um, I've got a tendency to miss bits on the back of the legs and the undercarriage, so yeah, try and catch those. If you do miss them, you can always touch up later, it's not a big deal. Um, but it does save time if you can catch them all on the first pass. Um, yeah, so once this is all uh, coated on, um, ordinarily this would be the bit in the video where you say, oh, set it aside and let it dry, but yeah. You're busy people, you've got things to do, so no one's got time for that. So instead what we'll do is pretend we know how to wet blend and this is sort of where the uh, the trick to the process is. Um, so as you can see, you, you'll want to sort of keep the mix a little bit damp. Um, try and get the, the coats on as quickly as you can. If you are doing larger batches, that's why it's important to sort of uh, have the paint a bit watered down, I guess. Um, And yeah, um, I'll just mention now, don't worry too much about the ratios when you're mixing. If there's a bit of inconsistency, it just means you're going to have variation in the horse colours. So whatever I say or whatever I'm using is just whatever happened to hit the palette at the time. Um, feel free when you're doing this to uh, mix things up a bit and see what works for you. Just the final touches up here and there, and a bit of a detail pass to try and catch all the spots I've missed. So while everything's still wet, we're going to grab some Vallejo Cavalry Brown, which is red, but it's that's the name of the paint. It, um, yeah, I really like the colour, and just mix that straight through the mix. And what we're going to do here is just apply, sort of dabbing the paint on. We're just sort of um, not painting per se, just sort of bringing the paint on with a brush, um, which I know is a sort of tenuous distinction. Uh, but basically just trying to apply paint to wherever you would for a normal zenith or highlight, just to the horse's flesh, so leave the hair and things. Um, but yeah, the backs of the ears, under the saddle, um, the flanks, the chest, and just, yeah, touch the paint on. The idea is, because the paint's all still wet, the pigments will start blending together as it dries, and it'll sort of soften the transitions. So the transitions you see while it's wet, isn't necessarily going to be the final effect. This is sort of the trick with this process. And then for the final highlight, as you can see, a bit more cavalry brown's been mixed through. And we're just going to do, again, a zenithal touch on to uh, try and pick out some of the details and provide an extra layer of shading. 
if you know horse anatomy and I don't um, you might want to use this bit to actually pick out horse musculature and things as the horse is moving where it's been sculpted on uh, so this is what it looks like wet before it's had time to dry yours will probably be somewhat similar okay uh, brown horses we're doing the same thing we're going with a mix of chocolate brown and beige brown from Vallejo um, yeah this gives you brown or chest brown chestnut horses I'm not particularly good with the horse names um, so yeah even mix of both for the first pass again we're hitting everything but the horse furniture the process is the same for all the colors the only difference is um, the paints you're mixing in basically uh, so once we've got our liberal coat on and again while it's still wet we'll be getting the beige brown we used in the original mix and adding a little bit more on the side mixing that through to bring the uh, the highlight mix up and again as you can see we're just doing a bit of a, a zenithal touch up once that's done and while it's all still wet again a bit more beige brown into the mix and we're just going to pick out details um, again a zenithal highlight or just picking out any musculature as the uh, the case is and that's what it looks like when it's wet ready to dry okay this time black horses because I guess every uh, moustache twirling villain in a um, bad trope novel needs a black horse um, so we're starting here with a mix of black and dark grey for the first mix um, and then we'll be highlighting up with more dark grey for each of the two highlight mixes by this stage in the process I'm pretty sure you can work out where we go from here um, if you wanted to do a grey horse you could just start with an intermediate grey and add lighter grey or even a little bit of white to each layer if you wanted to you know, level up to look like a grey horse um, I haven't tried it here but the process is the same just make sure you add a little bit of the highlight colour or hue to each of the uh, three layers of the mix um, so what I'm really saying is your base colour the one that goes on first needs to have some of the highlight colour in just to soften the transitions through if, if you're, you're going with that um, yeah wet horse looks glossy and you can't see what the, the color transition looks like there sorry about that okay we've done black so now we need to move on to white for the you know the hero of the tragic novella or whatever you're you're gaming out on the tabletop um, so we're starting with a mix of roughly even parts German cam beige world war two and deck tan um, highlight for this uh, mix you probably didn't see this one coming will be white um, so the base mix will just have some white added for the first highlight and a little bit more white for the second detail zenithal highlight um, if you didn't want to go for this one yeah okay made a mess there if you didn't want to go for this type of thing which gives you a sort of a warmer look and you wanted a cooler um, white you could certainly go for a, a blue grey or a light grey in your mix and then highlight up with white through each stage and you'd get um, you'd get a cooler looking colour at the end of it but it would still definitely be um, representative of a white horse on the tabletop if that makes sense and the last of the five colours I'm going to do here is a light brown so this one the base mix is just roughly even parts of chocolate brown and yellow ochre if you don't have uh, Vallejo yellow ochre it's one of my favourite colours um, goes on it's it's a yellow that goes on with enough pigment um, that it covers over black relatively easily it's a brownish yellow um, but I really like the color recommend you pick one up if you you have trouble with yellow anyhow getting sidetracked um, yeah bonus internet point for anyone who spots which leg I managed to miss at this point and have to touch up later um, first highlight was more yellow ochre into the mix um, again hitting the zenithal areas um, once that mix was done there was a little bit more yellow ochre added in for the remaining zenithal touch up um, yeah you know the drill by now and there we go now at this stage you actually will need to set all these aside to dry properly um, so that's the block of eight that I was doing 
couple of spots I'll need to touch up later. Um, but yeah, there's enough sort of color variation there to, to make the unit look interesting. Okay, um, speed hacking time. We're going to break out the GW Contrast Basilicanum Grey and using it like a glaze, paint it on all the horse's tails, the mane, the muzzles, the backs of the ears, and um, put stockings. Okay, I know these things aren't the knees, but we're going to call them the knees because horse anatomy just is frightening to look at. Um, so yeah, from the, the knees down to the, uh, the hooves and make sure you cover the hooves as well because that'll save us a step later on. If it's pulling down to the bottom of the hooves that's fine, we want them to be pretty dark so that'll work out well once you see where we're heading from here. But yeah, as you can see we're just sort of picking out the points um, to create a bit of visual interest. Um, did I mention back of the ears? It's, it's a bit I tend to miss. Uh, up to you whether you get it. And yeah, if you're feeling brave you can pick out the eyes. Um, brave is probably a, a poor word to use. If you've got the time, pick out the eyes if, if you you want to. Otherwise, you can always get them later on. It's fine if you're, you're so inclined. Um, so that's what they'll all look like with the uh, Basilicanum Grey Pass on. Once that's dried properly, break the white out again. And we're swapping to a small brush here. We've been using a, a big one at this point. Um, but yeah, I've just gone for a, a cheap synthetic one with a, a fine point. Um, Okay, so this is where we'll pick out some details just to make the horse look a bit more realistic. Uh, there's a bit on the horse's nose which is called a blaze, as I understand it. I don't know why they didn't call it a snoot star. I think snoot star would have been much better. I'm personally going to champion that phrase. Um, so you paint a squiggly pattern or a V or just some dots on the nose, give it its own little blaze, make it look unique, and then just paint the socks on, as you can see is happening here. Um, so I'll, say, I'll usually paint either two socks, um, being like front left and back right or mixing it up a bit. I'll paint three or I'll do all four depending and if you just mix that up between the horses it'll give it a very look um, but create enough visual interest that at a casual observation they look pretty realistic. Um, yeah make sure to leave the horse unpainted because um, it'll save painting them later on. You can see that they they look like they've been done properly in that shot. Uh, completely optional step here, I've got some deck tan and while the riders are off I'm just going to paint the uh, the canvas on the horse's packs. Um, at this stage if you're so inclined you could pick out the horse's blankets and add detail to them or just get some steel colouring and, and add that to the, the metal work on the horse's tack. Um, but then again, you, if you're keen to get them on the table, just skip this, let the snake bite leather do its thing and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll get them on the tabletop much faster. And just always remember that, you know, it's done enough for now. As long as you're happy to game with them and you're happy enough with the look of them, that's fine. And if you choose to, you can always come back and add more detail later. So um, don't think you're selling yourself short. Okay, at this point I've just glued the riders on. You can see where I've touched them and made a mess and it painted the bases brown. So I'll have to go back and fix the riders up later. Uh, just to disguise the puzzle puddle bases, I've built the bases up a bit with Vallejo brown mud at this point. Then I've PVA'd on some sand mix and glued on some tufts with um, Elmer's clear glue. Excuse me. <coughs> um, then hit them with a matte varnish and glued the banner on. So as a completely optional step, um, you could leave it here. Or what I've done is I've done a targeted zenith or highlight with a dry brush of desert sand um, because I want my unit to look consistent with the other rest of the force. I'm in two minds as to whether or not it improves the look. Um, your mileage may vary, pick a works for you. Alright, thanks so much for tuning in, have an awesome day.